This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. That the history books will remember this time as a time in which our city came together to sacrifice for the common good. The slow move toward opening businesses in Marion County continues, but the city of Indianapolis remains on a different timetable than the rest of the state. Good evening to you at 7 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullen, social distancing in my temporary home studio. And I'm Amanda Starantino at the WRTV studios. Stage 3 in Marion County's return from the pandemic will look slightly different than the stage almost all of Indiana is in now. The mayor and the director of Marion County's health department say the county is slowly making progress in the fight against COVID. COVID-19. But even as more parts of the county open up, the mayor is asking the public to cooperate and especially to wear a mask. When you see someone with a mask, they aren't wearing it for themselves. They're wearing it for you. And to those who disagree with the science or the style of wearing masks in public, I have an even simpler message. You're simply wrong. Here's what the next stage for Marion County will look like. Starting Friday, indoor religious services can expand to 50% capacity as long as there are social distancing measures and worshipers are wearing face coverings. Starting Monday, restaurants can resume indoor dining at 50% capacity. They can also continue outdoor dining at the same customer levels. Malls and other retail stores must continue to have social distancing, but they can raise their capacity from 50 to 75%. And Gyms and pools can also reopen at 50% capacity, again with mandatory social distancing measures. Also, personal services such as salons, spas, and tattoo parlors can reopen on Monday, but by appointment only. Also, it will be mandatory for staff and customers at those businesses to wear masks. Bars, bowling alleys, and movie theaters will remain closed. Also today, the city is reopening the southwest quadrant of Monument Circle to car traffic. It had been closed to help restaurants offer outdoor dining. The southeast quadrant of the circle will remain closed to vehicles for now. We have all of this information for you at our website at theindychannel.com. Connecting people together in such an isolated time, strangers from across Indiana are sewing thousands of face masks to give to dozens of school districts. RTV6's Stephanie Wade shows us how this small act of kindness will have an enormous impact come fall. As schools debate what learning will look like come fall, a local sewing group is making sure all districts have plenty of these to make sure their students are safe. I thought I could sew a hundred masks and donate them to Eskenazi. This is beyond anything I could have imagined. The group Sew and Serve, now up to nearly 6,000 Facebook members, originally set out to sew face masks for healthcare workers. But once the hospitals they were donating to received their long awaited shipments of PPE, the group shifted their focus elsewhere. Now the group is donating their home sewn face masks to schools. So far, working with 26 school districts, including Avon, Zionsville, Noblesville, and 2,000 masks to Hamilton Southeastern. There are so many things to think about right now in terms of, you know, maintaining. Number one is the physical safety, psychologically, physically, of our kids. And, and also the parents who are, are entrusting us to keep their kids safe. So we know that face covering will be a critical part of that when we do, in fact, someday return back to whatever we call our new normal. HSE tells me they still have staff working in the schools every day, deep cleaning. Plus, teachers had to return to take down their classrooms after abruptly closing. If they do return in the fall, HSE is considering face masks for staff and students but have not made any decisions yet. If we were to have the students come back, we'd have to make sure that we do have a safe environment for them to enter into. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. So and Serve is taking numbers from school districts to see if they have the capacity to provide every student with a mask come fall. To get involved, we will attach a link to their website at ours at theindychannel.com.
Now let's get the latest on the coronavirus numbers from the Indiana State Department of Health. 1,850 Hoosiers have now died from coronavirus. More than 32,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for the virus, and more than 230,000 people have been tested in Indiana. The Federal Trade Commission has a new warning about scammers targeting college students, and like many recent scam, it's tied to the COVID-19 pandemic. The FTC says students are getting emails claiming to be from the financial department of their college or university. And it asks them to click on a link for a message about their COVID-19 stimulus check. But if you click on the link, you could be giving your personal information to scammers and possibly downloading malware onto your device. So if you get an email like this, you should not click the link. You can also report this or any other type of phishing scam at the website on your screen, ftc.gov slash complaint. The coronavirus pandemic helped fuel a surge in voting by mail for next week's Indiana primary, so much so that the Marion County Clerk's Office says it is overwhelmed. A number of voters still haven't received the absentee ballots they requested. That has them worried that they may not be able to return them by the deadline of noon on Election Day next Tuesday. The Marion County Clerk now recommends that when you fill out your absentee ballot, you should try to return it in person to one of the county's 22 voting centers. If a voter receives their ballot in the mail this week, I would not recommend that they put their ballot in the mail just because we may not get it in time. The clerk's office says there was a record number of absentee ballot applications in Marion County for the primary, but COVID-19 restrictions have also limited the number of people in the clerk's office who can process those applications. Dry but humid across central Indiana. Temperatures a little cooler today. 80 for the high temperature or current temperature right now in Muncie. It's 74 in Indianapolis. Humidity is sky high and not changing until we get to Friday afternoon. Notice the rain that's north of Fowler now that will continue to pull away from Benton County. Rest of central Indiana is dry. We'll talk about when rain returns tomorrow and what big impact a cold front will have on the weekend all coming up. After beating COVID-19, many patients find themselves facing a new battle. Up next, a look at the physical and mental issues some survivors are facing. Only on RTV6 News. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Well, since the pandemic began, we've been bringing you stories of survival, sharing the moments patients hospitalized for COVID-19 get to finally head home. But the battle for many of those patients does not end when they leave the hospital. RTV6's Cornelius Hawker shows you what a doctor and survivors say about the mental toll of fighting off serious COVID-19 cases. Dr. Barbara Kahn runs the Critical Care Recovery Center at Eskenazi Health Services. The center helps ICU survivors suffering physical and mental issues. Now the patients are in isolation. Family is not allowed to visit. They cannot see their loved ones. He says the scenario faced by COVID-19 survivors sets them up for potential problems once they leave the hospital setting. Because of being exposed to extreme stress, they can develop symptoms of anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorders. The issues people face after battling a critical illness like COVID-19 is called post-intensive care syndrome. Damare Williams, who was in the hospital for COVID-19, has some of the symptoms Dr. Khan mentioned. I now have anxiety attacks and, um, and now they're looking into it as PTSD. There's some nightmares going on. There's some other like mental stuff that goes on. Williams's fight with the virus began toward the end of March. Things got so bad at one point, the doctor told him to start getting his affairs in order. Right after he told me, we planned my funeral right after that. When I first got out, I still had hallucinations for about five days. I fight on a daily basis, but um, for the most part, it's being it's being controlled. I don't have I'm not on medication or anything like that. Um, just have to work through it each day. His doctor is working with him on a treatment plan so he can get back to cutting hair once barber shops are allowed to reopen. Holding clippers will be different at first and and I'll get back into it because that's what I do, but it's it's just the confidence of just doing it and making sure it's, it's still at a high level. Dr. Khan hopes doctors treating patients who've recovered from COVID-19 will start asking questions and working on treatment plans that will help them regain a sense of normalcy. Acknowledging it and connecting with them and 
tell them that, okay, I may not have gone through this, but I can understand somewhat that you're going through and we have the resources and we can pull it together. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV. Allergy season is in full swing, but with COVID-19 still rampant, it may be hard to distinguish between your symptoms. Coming up, we break down the differences and what you need to look for if you're feeling under the weather. And weekend temperatures will be cool. We'll talk about how dry we'll be over the next uh, several days after the weekend coming up. Home experts at theindychannel.com. There's a perception that smoking weed will mellow you out, but researchers say it might be the exact opposite depending on the potency. In fact, they say the higher the potency, the higher the risk of anxiety and addiction. Researchers talked to more than a thousand people on what kind of marijuana they smoked. They found that the ones who said they use high potency weed were more likely to report anxiety. And not only that, researchers say those folks were more likely to use weed at least once a week and twice as likely to have used illicit drugs in the past year. The research is helping to bring into focus why some people abuse alcohol. Scientists at Yale say it's in the genes. They've expanded on previous genetic studies to discover 19 new genetic risk factors for alcoholism. The researchers say the average person wouldn't know if they had these genes, but studies like this can be used to develop better treatments. They suggest people with family histories of alcohol abuse consider avoiding alcohol or monitor their own use closely. Coronavirus antibody tests are more widely available these days, but now there are new concerns about their accuracy. The CDC says these tests can be wrong up to half of the time. The tests are supposed to show if someone has had the virus already. CDC guidelines say because of accuracy issues, results from these tests should not be used to make policy decisions like reopening schools. The guidelines also say that people may need to take the test more than once. And spring is in full bloom, and for many of us, that means allergy season. And with COVID-19 at the top of people's minds, you may be wondering, are these symptoms of allergies or the coronavirus? Our Alyssa Donovan found out. May and June are typically when allergies are the worst here in central Indiana. And with the COVID-19 pandemic heightening your awareness of any changes in your health, we found out what the major symptom differences are between coronavirus and seasonal allergies. About 15 to 30 percent of our population suffers from allergies. Pulmonologist Mason Goodman says the most noticeable symptoms of allergies include sneezing, watery, itchy eyes, scratchy throat, and sinus congestion. People with allergies can also experience a dry cough. However, fever, which is a common COVID-19 symptom, is not associated with seasonal allergies. And that is usually dry and non-productive. Usually it doesn't have sputum associated with that. A sore throat, significantly more intense than what is seen in allergies, is also usually present. Uh, shortness of breath, especially with activity, is a big issue as well. And multiple body aches and pain and fatigue is also present as well. Dr. Goodman says as of now, there's no proof that anyone with seasonal allergies is more susceptible to catching the coronavirus or will have more severe symptoms if they catch it. He says if you're experiencing any symptoms that you think might be COVID-19 related, you should call your doctor and set up a virtual appointment. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Well, I'm anxious to unveil some changes as we go to the weekend, but first we've got at least a day and a half where the humidity is high and our rain chances will be higher than they have been. Probability of rain tomorrow really from the get-go from the morning hours on 60%. Friday, the probability of rain is greatest in the morning hours, then decreasing rapidly as we go into Friday afternoon. That's because a cold front will move through and it will clear the air literally and figuratively, lower the humidity certainly, Temperatures fall below average. We'll have lots of sunshine and the temperatures in the low 70s across central Indiana. There's your weekend forecast. Starts cool both Saturday and Sunday morning. Nice recovery into the low to mid 70s. The mid 70s, though, I think reserved for areas like Bloomington, Columbus, Nashville, Bedford, and Seymour. Morning low temperatures with the humidity so low, it'll be perfect to open the windows in the evening hours as we get through the weekend. Let some of that fresh air in.
Muncie's at 80. The other temperatures at 80 are above Peru and Lafayette. As you go south, temperatures are generally cooler. A few more showers and more rain or, and more cloud cover to the south. There you can see Sullivan and southern Vigo County with some rain showers. What was in Benton County is now pushed north, and so the shower, thunder shower, leaving the county. Okay, that little swirl that you see over northwest Arkansas, southwest Missouri, is an area of low pressure. It will move northeast toward northern Illinois. What it will do is continue to spin more moisture into Indiana and increase our chance for thunderstorms overnight, but really during the morning hours tomorrow through the afternoon. Generally, some pockets of heavy rain possible, isolated thunderstorms right now, not expecting any severe storms. 7 a.m., there's your rain in central Indiana by 9, pushes a little bit to the north. That doesn't end our threat for the day as we warm up and uh, temperatures will be cooler tomorrow. We'll still bubble up some downpours through the afternoon. Temperature by noon, around 70 degrees. Afternoon temperatures will struggle to hit 80 for the high. As we move into the weekend, our temperatures will be cooler with less humidity because of this. A change in the wind direction. The wind out of the northwest delivers that more comfortable feel. And it ushers in a dry stretch of days. Saturday, probably through Wednesday. Wednesday's probability rain just 20%. So at least a four or five day dry stretch, much needed kind of regroup after our daily chance for showers and that high humidity. We'll be right back with more news right after this. Yours. The warm weather is good news for businesses like the Square Scoop in Fountain Square. The shop serves up creative ice cream flavors in combination, but that's not all. Our Brad Brown shows nostalgic treats are also on the menu. You can find just about anything you're hungry for in the Fountain Square neighborhood. But if it's time for ice cream, it's time to get into the Square Scoop. It's been different, that's for sure. I mean, once the weather improved, we've had a pretty good crowd. Um, and it certainly hasn't been to the level that it was during the warm weather last year yet. Um, but I think hopefully we're getting there. The Scoop took over this space last fall. Along with their full selection of ice cream treats, they offer a wide range of old time candy and sodas. We've got candy from basically every decade. You know, things that I remember from when I was a kid, you know, things that kids now recognize too. The Square Scoop's case already includes some unique flavors, but you can also take any of their dozens of soda selections and make a float of your own. Well, we had somebody do cookies and cream and lemonade, which I thought was very odd. <laughs> they seem to enjoy it, so that's all good. Um, I think one thing that people really appreciate down here is we offer several vegan options. Um, so instead of just being able to get a sorbet or something like that, um, uh, those that are lactose intolerant or vegan are able to choose from a few different flavors. So that's always been popular. The updated social distancing rules mean this little shop can only go one at a time. But customers continue to wait their turn and smile. Abound. I think all in all, people are pretty respectful and they understand that. So, um, so it's been good and, um, you know, it's, it hasn't really changed our menu that much because most of the items in an ice cream shop are grab and go anyway, really. Early on, there were uh, probably a few weeks where we felt like we, you know, we were the only place open around, <laughs> you know, there wasn't much going on. Um, starting to see a little more activity, um, certainly with the cultural trail running right down Virginia Avenue. It really helps with foot traffic on nice days like today. Square Scoop is offering a take-home float kit. You get a four-pack of soda and a pint of ice cream, perhaps something like a vanilla cream soda and a pint of coffee toffee. Get creative with your combo. They're located right off the Fountain Square station of the Red Line, in case you're riding the bus over. Their hours are Tuesday through Sunday, 2 till 8 p.m., carry out only. And you can visit the Square Scoop website for more information on their menu and their daily flavor options. Working for you, Brad Brown, RTV6. Thank you, Brad. The ice cream will not melt as quickly this weekend, but you need the umbrella. Another sticky day tomorrow, 74 for the high. Well, thank you for making RTV6 your choice for news. Our next newscast is tonight at 11.